Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about the dual lands, in particular the blue ones. So you remember Star City Games when they bought the enemy Zendikar fetch lands out, they started with the blues and they focused their entire buying power on the blues and there was a lot of people saying, hey, these random people from Star City Games has put in like a large order for all my blue fetch lands. And that you could in real time see the fetch lands go up in price on TCG Player. And when before they had the little graph, right? And they did it slowly and steadily. So it's not like a lot of people believe Star City Games didn't do it because they didn't do it over the last day. No, they probably had advance notice months ahead. How do I know this? Because Axeline was leaked months ahead. Commander 2017, the dragon, five color dragon deck, and it would be very surprising if it's only one deck out there, right? Probably Wizard of the Coast said, hey, hey those people who leaked the dragon deck, we want you to stop, like let's give you some free product and shut you up. I'm positive that he has the other four. It doesn't make sense that he just took the dragon deck, right? Oh, cool, it's not like he's shopping at Walmart, right? This is probably an enclosed space where the, the it's some type of monitoring, I would hope. Now, I wanted to take a snapshot of prices now, and then when it's all over, to see where prices will be. A buyout, if you did a buyout correctly, you wouldn't even know it was a buyout until it was too late for the regular people. And that's what a buyout is. The card didn't inherently overnight become more valuable. This Pro Tour is far in advance. This is Pro Tour 2018, not even the same year, that will have some legacy decks in them. Now, if you were to do it correctly, you would buy out as soon as you heard, and then you would slowly, because if, if you go too hard, you would spike your own buyout and you will not be able to continue to buy. It would be something like Filia, right? I didn't go in and buy every single Filia I could. I bought a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there, and I bought her at $2, under $2, and then she hit $2, and I bought her at 2 then she hit two twenty five, and I just kept buying it, right? And just kept buying, and that's the, that's what Star City Games has done on the dual lands. Instead of continuing they know what cards are going to be reprinted and they know what cards are not. And given their eternal, you know, their eternal masters sale before eternal masters came out and they were so right on every single one of those, pretty strange, no? It's two ways, right? What are they selling and what are they buying? And that's why looking at their buy list is always very important to do. Star City Games has enough power to control the market. Because it's not a huge market on these reserve list cards. There, there's not more of them. So if you have more capital, then you should be able to have more control over a very limited amount of cards. And every year they become more and more limited given that damage, loss, maybe a parent threw them out one time. There's plenty of things that can go wrong for the dual lands. And since they are on the reserve list, never to be reprinted again, something that I am a huge, huge advocate against. I hate the reserve list to the core because it's not what Magic is about. Magic is about playing, and when they made that choice, and they, they continue to make that choice, that's what you don't understand. They're still making that choice today, right? And they have made the choice to reprint some reserve list cards in the past. Karn, Silver Golem is once, Liver Queen is one. It's not impossible for them to do that. Uh, but of course they won't because they have to please these people who sell the cards. Here, here's my 100% guarantee. So let's say that you're hosting a GP or you're hosting a pro tour, or you're hosting something and you need to know in advance of the public that it's gonna be a, a event with legacy. Why do you need to know that? Because you need the vendor in this case, let's say it's Channel Fireball, needs to know, hey, Legacy's coming back. You might want to stock some Legacy now. You need, it's very natural. It's not like a devious, uh, it's not devious in terms of information. It's devious only when you act on it, right? 
So insider information is people get caught not because they heard a rumor or they heard about it, it's because they tried to be greedy and make money from it. That's what inside trading is. Uh, there's plenty of stuff that gets said in Wall Street. And I did work, at, I did do an internship at Wall Street at one of the bigger firms at the time. And it's you hear all types of crazy stuff. Uh, and as a lower level intern, you don't really know what's real or what's not real. But at the high levels, there's more certainty. Hey, let me tell you something. Legacy is going to be in the Pro Tour again. The Wizard of Coast is telling this to Star City Games or Channel Fireball, and they're telling it to Channel Fireball because they got to prepare for that, right? Then they're get, that's good information. That That's information they need. The vendor needs to know, hey, we're going to have a try event with Legacy Modern Standard. Be ready for that because that's a different event than a sealed event, let's say, or a limited event. You would have different staffing concerns. You would need a judge who would do judges who do legacy, who know the more complicated legacy issues. Uh, and you would probably even need different commentators on your stream if you were to stream it because you wouldn't want a commentator that didn't understand legacy, right? When you're reporting on the legacy event. So it's very natural for there to be in information given from Wizard of the Coast to Star City Games. And I'm not criticizing that. That has to happen. So if Star City Games or Wizard of the Coast, in this case, wanted them to do a GP event for Legacy that are involved Legacy, they would have to tell them in advance so they could get ready because it takes a long time to worry about the convention space, uh, hire judges, figure out prize support, all this stuff because your legacy people are going to be interested in different prize support than a standard person or a modern person. And when you have all three of them in one room, that's very different than having just a sealed event where people might not even bring their decks or EDH decks. So that's not the problem I have. The problem I have is when they use the information, and this is what insider trading is for their benefit because it harms the market. So the market should all, in a ideal scenario, everyone should have the same opportunities. In life, that is never true. Never true, but again, we're talking ideals, right? And so for some a major store to know about this and then to take action on it, that's where it's bad. That's where it's bad, right? So if they just knew about it and they took the information and it helped them plan their vending and that's all they did with it, perfectly fine. Very good. But because there's no control on the system, they're incentivized to take the information and just go ham with it, right? Because who's going to penalize them? And even to the point of the GPs, let me speak about this, uh, why having a monopoly is not good. It's not even on channel fireball. Because these stores no longer have the incentive of being a GP or being granted a GP, which I assume makes them money. There is be, their behaviors can change now. They are not going to be as, okay, let's follow what Wizard of Coast has told us to do and not leak this stuff. Again, the problem stems from this. A random dude, two separate dudes, by the way, a random dude on Instagram has the entire <laughs> five color commander deck. Another random dude has all the rares and mythics on a foil sheet, not just a regular sheet, a foil sheet. And months, even before Hour of Devastation is spoiled, he has a foil sheet. Think about that for a moment. These are not like even employees. These are not like, these are random people. You don't think that Star City Games, China Fireball, has people working in Wizards of the Coast. All it takes is one person. They don't need a whole team to like tell them what's going on or have official announcement. All it takes is one person in Magic the Gathering Development to take one photo, send that one photo, and they would know what is on Excellent. And they would know that the buddy check lands are going to be reprinted and the fetch lands are safe. All it takes is one guy. You don't think they look at this like if a random stranger can do it, you don't think that an employee of Wizard Coast is looking at these cards and saying, oh, cool, Buddy Lance, I better text my friend at Star City Games about this. Text, text, text. Oh, 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 Buddy Lance. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> of course, this is how life works, right? 
And that's why Wizards of the Coast has so many leaks. Because their money is involved. And I'll get into that a little later this week. But that has to be like in person. Anyway, bye guys.